Hello, Crazy Love. How are you? Hello, Crazy Love. We wanted to take this moment to give you an update on what it will look like to return to in-person gatherings. Our senior leadership team, who we also call SLT, have been meeting every other Monday night over Zoom since the quarantine began. And we've been talking about what it will look like to return to in-person gatherings and when. I don't know about you, but I know that I and a number of other people that I'm aware of had a, had, had a hard time during this time of shutdown. Uh, some, some of us had experienced times of isolation. I know that some people have had too much time on their hands. Heather and I personally have been somewhat overwhelmed with all the things that we've had to attend to. Um, yeah, homeschooling has been a particular challenge, as I know it has been for several parents. Can I get an amen? <laughs> we know that many of you want to get back together in person, and I just want to tell you, so do we. We are so excited for when we can be in person again. We've been talking about uh, what it looks like to gather again for the last six weeks. Um, the announcement from President Trump came a little sooner than we anticipated, uh, but we have been talking about this for several weeks, and we um, have uh, several ideas that we are going to be implementing over the next couple months. So we're a body, and we need to think about our whole body. I love this verse in 1 Corinthians 12. It's verse 14, and it says, Even so, the body is not made up of one part, but of many. And later, in verse 26, it says, If one part suffers, every part suffers with it. If one part is honored, every part rejoices with it. And we know that Jesus has called us to lay our lives down for each other, that that's what true friendship looks like. So in this process, we want to think about the whole body. So one of the things that I think is really important is um, more than just when we start meeting and gathering, but how we start meeting in-person gatherings. And we really want to have a great plan. Uh, we've heard different ideas and suggestions um, from others and what other churches are doing. Some people have suggested not singing uh, because singing can be a potential uh, cause for spreading uh, COVID-19. And uh, another thought was not to have the kids included at all, just have the kids stay at home. Um, we're not really fond of either of idea those ideas. So we really are processing this really thoughtfully, prayerfully, because we wanna have a great plan when we come back together. So we will definitely return to in-person gatherings in the next several weeks, but it will probably be in stages. And even though President Trump has asked for all houses of worship to reopen now, for us, it depends on when our state government moves our county into phase three. We would love to see our local, state, and federal government become united in their approach to uh, phasing back in to all of this. And we just really hope and want and desire as a church to be united and not divided. Yeah, even as we're talking about community, um, one of the things that's important about community is, is unity. And we feel like we want to honor the president, but we also want to honor our local government in unity. So we're waiting to hear a united um, uh, direction from both uh, our governor and President Trump. So I know that that's gonna be just around the corner and we're looking forward to that. Uh, one thing I forgot to share a little bit earlier as far as coming back together, we really wanna have a plan with regards to unity, talking about unity, we wanna have a plan that really it cares for uh, for all of us. I know that some of us are, are very eager to get together. I think other people are, are concerned. And so we wanna have a plan that is uh, great for the youngest to the old, oldest, from the healthiest to the most vulnerable, for those who are very eager to get back to get uh, back together again in person, and for those who are still weary. Oh, so the other part of uh, in re returning back in person, uh, we want to follow the state guidelines and um, care about that. But for us, the most important thing in all of this is hearing from Jesus and following him. And we really feel like we've got some direction from him and we wanna share uh, a little bit about that with you. Uh, yeah, uh, just a, a little bit too. Uh, yeah, we, 
we realize that this has been a hard time. Um, and uh, yeah, even even some funny things. I feel like for me personally, um, I've uh, I've been eating a little bit more, and I call it. I'm working on my my COVID nineteen. <laughs> I I am shooting for for that two hundred pound mark, <laughs> and uh, we'll see if we get there. Um, but I've also had moments where I just had to sleep in a little bit later certain mornings and. Uh, clock out of homeschooling and all sorts of things. So I know that there are definitely places where I've struggled through this time and we've struggled as a family. Um, yeah, even preaching about community right right now at, on Sunday mornings, um, we've got a really fresh uh, yeah, experience of that, all the four of the Robinson family being crammed into a house and being on top of each other all the time that sometimes we have an amazing time together as the Robinson family, and and other times we, um, yeah, <laughs> other maybe times less than amazing. Are other times. <laughs> <laughs> so that's what I think sometimes it means to be family. But anyways, you know, church, we want to let you know that um, this is a huge crisis, and we understand that. But you know what? As a church, we've been through crisis before, haven't we? we there's things that we have faced as a church. There's things that Andrew and I have faced, um, other other crises we have faced personally. There's crises that you face personally. But you know what? We're still here. We're still here, and you're still here, and we're still here together. And we know that we are going to get through this crisis, just like we have gotten through other ones. Yeah, I shared uh, a couple of weeks ago that I feel like uh, the Lord has spoken to us in a number of different ways. But it seems that with regards to COVID-19, in some ways, he's been somewhat silent. But we want to share, um, if you've had the chance to be with us on our Sunday morning services on Facebook, um, you've heard some of those words that we've shared, and we feel like we have a little bit more from him, from the Lord, and we want to share that now. Um, so, yeah. So in the short term, until we're back together face-to-face, -to -face, I want to let you know that um, we have some fun stuff planned for our church family. And you're gonna be hearing about those soon. In fact, tomorrow at church on Sunday morning, we're gonna be talking about some of those. For example, game night. Has anybody heard of jackbox.tv? So we've got some game nights planned. We have um, some Sunday night Zoom gatherings that we're calling equipping nights, where you'll get to meet an Australian believer in the Lord. Um, you'll get to hear from a prophetic voice on a different time and also an apostolic leader. Um, other fun things we have is a bike ride through town and also a women's gathering and a men's gathering. So we're really excited to share about those events with you. Yeah, we feel like we really want to take and uh, make the most of this opportunity as we're staying at home and really see what Jesus is saying and take take that opportunity to equip and have fun together even though that sometimes we can't have fun face to face um, one of the things that uh, we take out of this season even uh, Sunday morning meetings we've learned a number of different things uh, we've introduced some things one of the things that we've done on a more regular basis is we've asked our prophetic team to send prophetic words uh, we begin to to even last Sunday there was an incredible amount of um, going back and forth of comments and people praying and sharing prayer requests and praying for one another on Facebook Live. And there's just some really amazing things that have happened during the season that we're going to be uh, taking forward with us. So we feel like the Lord's taught us some stuff, we've learned some stuff, and we're going to be taking that forward into the next season. Yeah, so in closing, we just want to encourage you. We have some prophetic words we want to share. And um, so first of all, we just wanna say that we are so glad that Crazy Love Church has remained open and connected, that many of you have joined us online where we're all together, even though virtually, as Andrew said, just the comments and the blessings of each other and saying hello. Um, many of us have gathered in care groups and that's been amazing. We've heard about virtual coffee dates that have happened. And we just wanna say that what an amazing church and an amazing community to be a part of that we have stayed connected and that's beautiful. Um, I wanna share a prophetic word that I felt the Lord give me yesterday. 
and it's out of Mark chapter 4. I'd been praying all afternoon, and I don't know if it was the two or three hours of intermittent praying that made me tired, but I suddenly got really tired, and all I wanted to do was go to sleep. And Andrew was in Bymart, and the kids and I were in the car, and I just put my seat back and started to fall asleep, and I said to myself, why on earth am I this tired? I couldn't keep my eyes open. And in that moment, the Lord actually gave me a vision. And I was suddenly in, a, in the boat with him out of, that we hear about in Mark 4. And he was asleep in the boat. And he, he told me in that vision that it's not time to make a change yet. But when it's time, he will speak peace to the storm. But right now, our assignment is to stay in the boat with him and to trust him. And that means that we stay together in the boat. We don't hear about the disciples in this storm jumping ship, right? <laughs> but we all stay connected, even if we have different ideas or different ways of approaching this, but that we can be there. And the best part to me of all of this vision, of this vision was that Jesus was with us. And I wanna read to you um, the Passion Translation. It says, Later that day, after it grew dark, Jesus said to his disciples, let's cross over to the other side of the lake. And I know we all want to be on the other side of this. After they had sent the crowd away, they showed off, they shoved off from shore with him as he had been teaching from the boat. And there were other boats that sailed with them. Suddenly, as they were crossing the lake, a ferocious tempest arose with violent winds and waves that were crashing into the boat until it was all but swamped. And it's felt like that, hasn't it? But Jesus was calmly sleeping in the stern, resting on a cushion. So they took him, shook him awake, saying, Teacher, don't you even care that we are all about to die? Fully awake, he rebuked the storm and shouted to the sea, Hush, calm down. All at once, the wind stopped howling, and the water became perfectly calm. So I just encourage you that Jesus is with us. We are in the boat together, and he's not worried, and he's going to take care of us. As you're sharing that, Heather, I have this picture of some of us might be on the boat wishing we were on the other side. <laughs> and I think maybe yes. that would be like, well, we need to have in-person gatherings uh, tomorrow. And I would just say for those people, just be patient. It's not, not, too, not too far around the corner that we'll be together again. And there might be some other people that um, are, you know, maybe you've been rowing and you're like, well, let's, let's row backwards. Let's go back, back to the, <laughs> other, the side we came from. And I would say for those of you who are uh, extra cautious, is uh, don't be afraid. Uh, we want to uh, really be careful in uh, hearing and following Jesus at this time. And I don't ever believe that there's a rush to hear Jesus and follow him. Yeah. And so I think, uh, uh, yeah, I have a word from my dad. My dad shared with me uh, this morning. It was my mom's birthday uh, today. And... Uh, my, my dad shared with me that he was waiting on the Lord and he heard this uh, phrase he, the Lord said to him whatever you give up in this season I will double and restore in the next season and well, there's a lot that we've had to give up in this season and I think that that's really key is that this is a time to trust in the Lord and to really keep our eyes on him wouldn't it be amazing if we came out on the other side of this storm and we will if we came out, all of us saying, we stuck together and we're closer for it. What if we came out on the other side and said, we all received from God. We all heard from him. And you know, because we're not quite on the other side yet, I, I want to encourage each one of us to ask Jesus, you know what? What is it you want to say to me right now? That, that you haven't brought us to the other side yet, but we are with you in the boat. And so while we're with you in the boat, what is it you are saying to me? What is it you want to do in me? And what do you want to do through me? You know, one of the things that I really have felt that I, I've heard from other voices, uh, prophetic voices, but I also feel like I've heard that myself, is that this season is like is a time to get to know Jesus like never before. And I feel like there are things that the Lord is doing in the season. We've heard of it being called a reset, that I think that there's things that he wants us to learn. And I don't want to rush that process. I don't want to miss what Jesus is saying. I have a number of friends that may be, uh, that are pastors, that are um, eager, very eager to get to back to having in-person gatherings. Um, I feel like I am eager, but I'm also cautious. 
part of that is that I feel like I've been on this journey that church for me and for the body of Christ is more than just Sunday morning meetings. Part of what we've been facing at this time is I'm asking the question, what is essential? What is essential that we do as a church? And so I think it's important that we learn from Jesus what is essential. And so there's those kind of questions, there's things that assignments that Jesus has given to us that I think it's really important that we hear those things. So I want to encourage you to continue to keep your head on the chest of Jesus and to mm -hmm. keep your ear close to his lips and hear what he's saying for us at this time. He's been speaking, we're attempting to follow him and we're gonna do the best we can to continue to follow him. Yes, and so we encourage you, as Andrew just said, seek the Lord for what is he saying? What is he saying to you? And what is he saying to crazy love? And how does he wanna to minister to you in this time? And how does he wanna minister through you in this time? And so stay in the boat with Jesus, stay in the boat with us. Um, we're gonna be sending a survey out actually um, tomorrow on Sunday afternoon. And we just encourage you to uh, fill out that one minute survey to let us know how you're feeling and um, how you wanna move forward. And we're just so excited to honestly, to see what the Lord is going to do as hard as this time has been. He's in the boat with us and he's taken us to the other side. Yeah. we. I think we want to really communicate that we really love you yes. uh, as, a, as a family. We, we really love you, love you so crazy much. love. And we are really excited about what the future holds for us as yes. a community. Uh, we feel like the Lord has spoken so many things through the years and that he has so much for us. Uh, recently, we received just this amazing prophetic mm. word, word from Steve Stewart uh, about uh, crazy love prospering and ex expanding and accelerating accelerating and so we really feel like there's so much for us and that we are really uh, called to be the fragrance of Christ in this valley and beyond and we're excited to see that expression occur and uh, for us to start putting our hands and feet to to, to that and so I, I think that's just around the corner How about you? Amy? amen absolutely we love you so much, and we can't wait to, to be together, together again in person. Yeah, bless you. May bless the Lord you. bless you and keep you and make his face to shine upon you. Amen. Amen.